Hi everyone, today I'm going to go over the last two games from Senta. Uh, both not good games, I would say, especially the last one. Okay, uh, in round 8, after having lost uh, round 7 to a Fide Master, I faced another Fide Master, weaker than 2300, but still a very strong player. And they saw that he plays the English opening most often uh, in most games uh, during the last 20 years he's played the English, so I could expect the English. And they saw that he obliges and goes into the semislav against c6, so I expected the semislav. So c4, c6, knight c3, d5, d4, knight f6, knight f3, e6. Uh, the semislav. Let me just flip the board because I'm black. Uh, and here he surprised me with what I don't think is a very popular move, uh, bishop g5 and d3, by far the most popular, c takes d5, uh, the third popular move with only 2000 games in the database, I have to take with the e-pawn, and now bishop g5, bishop e7, e3. And the thing is, uh, we have a Carlsbad pawn structure, in which white, same as in the queen's gambit declined, wants to go for a minority attack, a3, b4, b5, undermine my c6 pawn, capture on c6, b takes c6, and then continue with knight a4, knight c5, uh, dominating my position. And you can already see that coming. So I know that in Carlsbad structures, ah, sorry, uh, it's beneficial for black to trade off the light squared bishops, uh, because that way uh, you have some more control over the key squares and the light squared bishop is sort of in the way in your structure with your pawn fixed on c6 or your all of your pawns fixed on the light squares. So I wanted to trade my bishop, bishop f5, bishop d3 and now bishop d3, queen d3, castles, castles, knight bd7, a normal developing move. And here he surprised me. I expected the immediate rook b1 or maybe a3. Both moves make sense. He played queen f5, which I've never seen before. I doubt is a good move, and I don't know what it does. Uh, perhaps, perhaps it's reinforcing knight e5 ideas. Perhaps it's, well, it's putting some pressure on d7. That much is clear. So I have to be a bit more careful, but I don't, don't think it's that threatening. So I played h6, gaining a tempo on the bishop, making some luft, bishop f4, and now rook e8. And here... He can play knight e5 immediately, uh, but he now played rook a b1, continuing with the minority attack. So he is going to undermine the Carlsbad pawn structure with a3, b4, b5. And now I had a long think. Uh, ironically, I, I just bought a book uh, on the middle game. Here it is. Uh, typical middle game positions. And I bought it during the tournament. And half a book is a Carlsbad pawn structure and the minority attack. Half the book is uh, the minority attack against the Carlsbad pawn structure. And I haven't read a single page because I just bought it the day before. But I remembered from my, from my play uh, before and knowing that I can sometimes enter the Carlsbad from the Semislav, I knew some of the principles and I knew some of the rules. And one of the main thing is for black to play b5 and then knight b6 followed by knight c4. So let's say I allow the move b4 here. Let's say I continue bishop f8, which is not a good move. Let's say b4. I now continue with b5, and my next idea is going to be knight b6, knight c4, and that's one way to defend against the minority attack. After rook a to b1, the other thing is just playing actively on the king side, and the third thing is just going a6, trying to prevent that. But there was one thing which I remembered seeing, which I liked. I didn't remember which game, I didn't remember the exact position. But the point was of the of the refutation of the minority attack was bishop b4. And now, if he allows me, I'm going to take, messing up his pawn structure and play knight e4. Put pressure on the on the weak c3 pawn. Basically, do what he's trying to do to me. So he has to play rook f to c1. And now, during the half hour where I've calculated bishop before, I was looking at this. Bishop c3, rook c3, knight e5, rook b3, knight b6. And I couldn't see what's wrong with my position. His f3 knight is fixed, uh, has to defend knight d2. Otherwise, he loses the exchange. Uh, I think my knight is fine on b6. I might even continue with rook e7, 
queen d7, knight c4, or even a5, a4. Uh, so I think black should be fine here. If you turn on the engine, it's equal, slightly better for, for black. And that's that was the point of bishop b4. After rook fc1, though, I just... I got scared, I think. I don't know of what. Uh, and since he played rook fc1 so quickly, I guessed that my move had to be bad, which was just a, a bad thing to do. And they completely changed plans, lost three tempi and lost a pawn instead of going for the equal position. So just a horrible decision. a6, a3, bishop a5, b4. And now obviously bishop b6 should be the best move, but I was frustrated because I gave up on my plan and just blundered bishop c7 and now obviously bishop c7 queen c7 knight e5 wins we take with the knight queen takes my queen is still hanging so now queen d6 and now a long struggle in a worse game and this should be lost practically especially against such a strong player but i continued playing Knight f6 check knight takes f6 knight e5 a dominant knight in the center rook a d8 a4 Rook e7, b5, the minority attack comes. The difference is that I no longer have the d5 pawn, which sort of helps against the minority attack. Here I was trying to calculate uh, c takes b5 and a5. Uh, I'm sorry, yeah, c takes b5 and a5, but that doesn't work because of knight c4, queen c7, b6. So after b5, I just took cb5, ab5, ab5, and after rook b5, I, I continued rook c7. And now this is one of the tricks in the position. Uh, if he takes, he has a weak back rank, so he's going to have to uh, either retreat his rook or his queen uh, to the back rank, and then I have some activity. I'm also in some positions threatening queen takes knight if his rook moves, but that's all far-fetched and highly unlikely to happen. But he still played the safest move, rook f1, just retreating his rook. Queen a6 attacking the other rook, rook bb1, completely safe, not allowing me any tricks, which is the way this position should be played. b5, trying to push my passed pawn, knight d3, rook b8, knight b4, queen d6, rook b3, and now rook c4. And here I was happier. I figured, well, I have some activity for for the pawn. Uh, his e and d pawns aren't going anywhere for the moment. If I manage to remove the blockade from the b5 pawn and the pawn advances further up the board, then it could be dangerous. Queen b1 was played, and now rook b to c8. Uh, I wasn't really afraid of knight d3, because my plan was, plan was to play knight g4, for what it's worth, uh, or even knight e4, what happened later on in the game. I have the immediate knight e4, but he played h3, I continued g6, which is sort of a waiting move, I have to wait for knight d3, knight d3, and now knight e4. And here, well... I'm not going to win the exchange. It seems like a tricky move, but there's a really nice move which he found after about 10 minutes, which I saw before I played knight e4. But still, it's a nice trick. Of course, if he takes the pawn, uh, I can grab the exchange. Uh, doesn't matter what he does. And if I win the exchange, then it should be better in this position, despite being two pawns down. All of his pawns are connected, uh, but uh, I can control them easily with my rooks. So whatever he plays, uh, let's say he tries... Well, the problem is that I'm forking three pieces. So if he moves the rook, I'm going to play uh, knight d2. If he moves the queen, I'm going to play knight d2. So the only thing I saw was, uh, for example, rook to b2. And after rook to b2, I still think that I'm, I'm better. I can even continue... Well, I'm not sure what I do here. Perhaps I was, I was thinking of playing knight c3. can't remember my thoughts here. Maybe rook c3. Yeah, I saw a problem with this move, but I can't remember now. Let's see. Yeah, knight c3. And after knight c3, the queen moves somewhere. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about knight c3 and the queen moving. I think this should still be better for white. Maybe I can just continue. Moving my pawn. Yeah, so maybe maybe rook to b2 was better, but for some reason I thought knight c3 and or moving my pawn to b4 was better. 
But he found a better move, which I thought was the best move, and it is the best move, knight e5. And now uh, I have to play knight d2, and I don't win the exchange, unfortunately. But we trade off a lot of pieces, and perhaps the rook ending could be drawn, knight d2. Now knight takes c4. Uh, if I take the queen, he takes my queen, doesn't work. I have to take, uh, I have to take the knight. B takes c4. Uh, I can even take with the with the rook, and that way, uh, and that way I could win an exchange. That was the problem. Oh, I'm such an idiot! I just realized this. I just realized this. That he cannot take the pawn here after rook takes c4. He has to move the queen. And now I win the exchange. I'm such a moron. So after knight takes c4, I immediately recaptured with the pawn. And the problem is that that allows rook b6, allowing him to, to play the move. Queen, yeah, wait, 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 wait. No, yeah, what am I talking about? I already, I'm already an exchange down. Ugh. Okay, knight e5. Knight d2, knight x rook. Yeah, I'm not. Oh, I'm such an idiot. No, the point is that I've already given the exchange up. So yeah, I'm sorry about that. Okay, so taking with the pawn is probably correct. Rook c6, uh, queen f8, and queen b4. And now I get the exchange back. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I've already given the exchange up. So I, yeah, sorry about that. So king e7 here, king e2, king d7, king d2. Uh, and now rook a8, he's going to win my pawn anyway. After rook a8, king c3, and I have to play actively rook a2. And the point of this variation was rook f6, the only way to defend, and now king e7, rook f3. And this was my hope, giving up my c4 pawn to make his rook bad. So I continued with f5, rook takes, uh, king takes c4, and now king e6, preventing g4 from op opening up the position g4. Rook a4 check, king b3. Rook a8, gf5, gf5, rook f4, and now rook c8. And my idea was, well, if I manage to cut his king off, perhaps I can I can hold this position. Rook h4, winning another pawn, king d5, rook h6, f4, which I thought was the trickiest. Rook h5 check, king e4, rook e5 check, king d3. And now I'm threatening some stuff here, not really much, but still. He stopped it with king b4, and I played rook c2, uh, aiming at the f2 pawn. d5, rook takes f2, d6, f takes e3, and of course he, he is just winning here. Uh, let's see, I think it's more than plus 20, yeah, with just uh, d7. And I'm not sure what to do here. I mean, rook e8 check and this was my calculation was this trying to trying to take the queen this way but yeah obviously he's he's too fast but after f takes e3 which was my like final trick trying to get him to mess the position up he played rook d5 check and this now is a draw if i play correctly the drawing variation is king e4 and after d7 i play e2 Rook d4 check, king e5, d8 queen, e1 queen. It seems scary for black, but a queen we check and the variation is fine. After rook d5 check though, I blundered. Uh, I still wanted to keep this option open. I'm sorry, rook check here and rook d4. So I played king c2, which is now losing. And he continued rook c5 check and I played king b2 happily, thinking that, well, I still have this. And this is going to be a draw. Rook e5, rook d2. If we exchange pieces, if we exchange the pawns, then it's a dead draw. King c5 defending, of course. e2, king c6, king c1. I need to be able to queen and recapture with the king. d7, king d1. And now uh, find the win for, for white. Uh, the position is completely winning after simply king c7. 
there's nothing I can do. E1, queen, rook takes, king takes, d8, queen, rook takes, king takes, king f2, h4, and the pawn is too fast. However, after king d1, he blundered into a draw. He had a lot of time on the clock. He played this move quickly. I don't know what the point of the move was, but it just draws. Perhaps he wanted to outplay me, outwit me, try to get the queens of the board, both pawns, both queens of the board and both rooks of the board with his pawn farther advanced. But the problem is after his move h4, he doesn't have time to queen. He doesn't have time to queen. So e1 queen, rook takes, king takes, king c7, and now I have a perpetual check. Rook c2 check. I think he tried king d, king d6 check. I think this happened. And whatever he does, as soon as he gets to d8, I'm going to play the move uh, rook h2. If he moves away, then I'm going to check again. If he moves the pawn, I'm going to take it. And now once again, I have a perpetual check. Oh, I have to be careful. No, no, it's fine. No, it's not fine. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Okay. So now I check and just it's just a draw. I cannot win, but it's a draw. So he blundered into a draw, which was really lucky for me. I sighed after the game. I was, and I should have lost, of course. Uh, should have played better. I played bishop b4 and then I, I go a, b, c. And then don't not follow it up with D, but with something completely different, which is stupid. If you have to a plan, you have to. If you have a plan, you have to stick to it. And my punishment came around later. In round nine, I was facing a lower-rated opponent than I am. Uh, prepared for a long time, she is a very experienced player who plays the Sicilian uh, for like ten years. She's twenty years old. And against the open Sicilian, he plays. She plays knight c6. Against the closed Sicilian, she plays knight c6. I prepared the closed lines because she follows it up with e6. So c5, knight c3, knight c6, bishop b5, e6. And I was happy to see this on the board because this was all my preparation. f4, d5, d3, knight e7, which is okay, probably a good move. Uh, maybe g6 is better. Knight f3, and now queen b6, which was a huge waste of time. And she, of course, is aiming to play the move c4 and do something with that. But after c takes d, c takes d, I don't mind that position. And I don't mind her doubling her pawns if I can gain a tempo. So just castles, c4, king h1, takes, takes. And now she continued with bishop a6, which is... Uh, wait, where are we? Wait... Queen b6, castles, c4, king h1, cd3, cd3, bishop a6, yeah. And this position is now already, believe it or not, busted for black. Uh, and I saw two active plans. One of them was e takes d5, which I ended up playing, and the other one, which is much stronger, is f5, which I didn't play. And for the second time, two games in a row where I played the close Sicilian, I missed the opportunity to play f5 and end up losing the game. And... I'm going to have to do something about that. I don't seem to understand the close Sicilian if I don't understand f5. And f5 was really a good move here. It's a peace sacrifice, which cannot be taken, really. So my calculation was f5, de, uh, fe. And if she takes the knight, I'm going to take here. That's, I think this is far too scary for black. I mean, I'm just going to develop all of my pieces and crush her. I'm not sure what she does here. It's plus five, plus six. King d8 is the best move. Well, I mean, I think that being a piece down doesn't really make any difference here. So after bishop a6, I should have continued with f5 without too much thought. But I didn't want to risk much because I saw that the move e takes d was also strong. So e takes d5. If she takes with the pawn, uh, with the e pawn, then I think that it's too scary because of rook e8 and knight e5, and I'm going to open up the lines. Her king is still in the center, so e d5 I, I didn't expect. And after e d5, c d5 fails to queen check, and the king has to move. It's not clear where it moves, and knight e5 is coming, and all sorts of mating threats and stuff like that. If she blocks with the knight, then I still think knight e5 and should be much better for me. Maybe not winning, but uh, definitely scary for 
definitely scary for, for black. Maybe I can even try bishop e3 here and if takes, takes here. I don't know. But in any case, I expected knight takes d5 after e takes d5 and that's what happens. It happened, knight takes d5 and my calculation was knight e5. And now I expected the move bishop e6, which, bishop d6, which was played. And my calculation was queen g4. And here I didn't see her move, which was a very good move. Here I expected uh, bishop takes pawn, uh, bishop takes knight and pawn takes bishop and then castles and bishop h6, probably giving up the exchange. The other thing I expected was takes, takes and castles queenside, <laughs> just giving up the pawn here and going for an attack, which I'm not sure I would have taken here, to be honest. Uh, I'm not sure I would have take, taken. This seems extremely scary for, for white now. And not that the black king is safe, but this is just scary. So after queen g4, I expected something like that. But she just castled, giving up the exchange. So I took it, knight d7, queen d5, knight takes, rook takes. And now I'm exchange up, so I want to trade off the pieces, knight d5, cd5, and rook d1 defending my pawn. Uh, if she takes with the bishop, then queen f3 wins the bishop. So that's impossible. Rook c8, the most active move. And now I had a long thing. Uh, I was already down on the clock, not down on the clock, I had less time than she had. I was about, I had about 50 minutes left here, so a lot of time still, but she had, I think, more than an hour. My candidate moves here were queen f3, and if rook c2, uh, I was going to continue bishop e3, and if queen takes b2, I was going to play rook a b1, just with an active position, and I don't really care about these pawns, I want to get my bishop into d4. So that was my plan. Uh, the other move I was calculating was queen e2, just stopping rook c2. And after, let's say, bishop takes f4, which might be the best option, just bishop takes f4, queen takes f4, queen d2, almost forcing an exchange of queens. And if this happens, I'm an exchange up. I, I mean, this is better for white, not easily convertible, but should be winning. And my uh, last candidate move, which I ended up playing, was rook b1. I wanted to prepare bishop d2. And uh, the, I didn't see one move. I miscalculated one move. Rook c2, bishop d2. Uh, rook takes b2, which I expected. Rook bc1, which I wanted to play, threatening bishop c3. But I missed, before playing rook b1, I missed the, the simple bishop b4. And now it's hard to play black, uh, to play white. Bishop takes, queen takes. Now I continued with queen g5, trying to get my queen into the position. I'm not really sure what a good move would have been. Uh, Queen g5 obviously wasn't. Let's just see with an engine. Yeah, yeah, this is what I... Yeah, okay. So the problem is that uh, for her, if I play a3, she cannot take because of rook a8. Okay, so this would actually be a good move forcing the queen to... Well, keeping my pawn, at least. And after queen g5, what happened was h6 and queen e5. And now rook takes a2, and she is now threatening to double her stuff on the second rank and threaten mate because my queen is no longer on g4. So I continued with rook b1, queen a4 and now threatening queen c2 to get into the into the light squares and threaten mate on f2. And now I had a huge thing which didn't yield any results at all. A huge win, uh, a huge thing, I'm sorry, huge thing in a position which I completely misunderstood. So I'm an exchange up here. Uh, two pawns down for the exchange, so black has uh, enough material even, and I would say that black is even better here. So, uh, my moves were queen c7, rook c1, but after rook c1 I didn't like bishop takes pawn, after queen c7 I didn't like rook c2, and after let's say queen check king here, uh, yeah, I didn't like the fact that the the queen could just come to a2. The problem is now after rook a8, queen c6 is a possibility and the bishop is defended. So I didn't think I had anything there. Uh, the other move I was calculating was rook a1, which is just bad. Uh, let me just remember the refutation. What was the refutation here? Uh, can't remember. Yeah, maybe just bishop takes pawn. 
yeah, and it's hard to play this position. So, in the game, I continued queen b8 check, and the original plan was queen b3. And now if I do go queen b3, let's say queen a5, let's say rook c1, I mean, I'm going to lose a pawn, but perhaps I'm going to lose a pawn. But I have something here, and they should be equal. But after queen b8, king h7, I took on a7, which is just horrendous. It's just bad. Queen c2, and now the only defense is queen g1. I continued rook g1. She took on d3, and now uh, I think the only defense is something like queen e3, bishop e4, and queen g3, where she is probably just going to queen her pawn and win. Maybe even take here. I'm not sure. Maybe that even works. Sure. Maybe it doesn't, but yeah, it doesn't. Okay. But she might just continue. Uh, she might just continue uh, after queen g3, just d4, and queen her pawn. After bishop takes d3, though, I played such a bad move that the people around watching my game couldn't believe that I managed to lose that position. I was already frustrated because I was now down on time, didn't understand the position at all and thought I was worse, which is true. But my next move is just... whoa. And now after bishop e4 I can resign, this is a mate in a couple of moves. There's nothing I can do to defend. I think the best move is queen takes pawn. If I try h4, bishop takes here, I think bishop f1 should be the best move. Uh, Something like this, probably. I'm not sure. It's mate in several moves. Yeah, mate in one with the bishop. So yeah, that was the mating pattern. So an undeserved draw in round eight and a deserved loss in round nine. But the loss came because I was too afraid to sacrifice my piece with f5, which got punished. And yeah, f5 not being played, played punished again. In the first game at the Croatian Cup, I also missed f5 in a winning position in the close Sicilian. Lost the game and here as well. So that's going to be one of the main things I work on in the following months. Uh, I need to improve my close Sicilian. I seem to know the opening moves, but I don't know the middle game plans that well. So I'm going to work on that. Thanks very much for watching. I'm going to provide uh, tasks in the daily PDF for patrons. If you would like to support me, please check out the link in the description below. There's daily material for those of you uh, who become patrons. Thanks very much. Hope you like the games, even though they were of uh, dubious quality. And stay tuned for more chess. Thanks. Bye-bye.